Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C, Certified Brewhead. And I'm Tiffany, Liquid Enthusiast. And welcome to the final episode of Beer and Other Shit Link Up Series 4, episode 23. I always forget these numbers. Uh, the, of, of the final... Fucking hell. The final one of Series 4. See, I tripped myself up on that. Yeah. Um, this numbers. is a, a big one. We got Barrington in the building, as usual. Um, this is a great one. Uh, it. We are featuring some individuals from our favorite state period there's no question about that no question. and basically our favorite place on earth yes and we haven't so been you should there. know if you listen to this podcast and you know, know what we're talking our about place on on earth is yes exactly right link up series four has been epic and this is something that we haven't done before um and this is a bit of a bonus thing so people who are sort of watching might have noticed we kind of didn't do it in the exact order of the things were released which we're going to get into so we had willabold mm -hmm. we had week two which we'll get into we had Laura, Mascot, Toltec, Sun and Hill, and we're bringing back week two for a special bonus drop. So we had to get the full conversation. This is our first, like Tiff was saying, our first interview for Link Up outside of Canada and our first participant in Link Up. So this is really, really big for us. And it's not only just our favorite state and our favorite place in the world, it's our favorite brewery in our favorite state. So it's a little <laughs> ridiculous. I'm excited. Tiff's excited. Guys, please welcome John and Bob. From Foam Brewers in Burlington, Vermont. Make some noise. <laughs> you legends. Boys, welcome and thank you both for uh, being a part of this and for hanging out tonight. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's, much appreciated. It's it's an honor and a pleasure. Um, this is this is this is really really cool for for Link Up, and uh, I know we're talking off air, and we're just very very grateful for you guys for doing this. And it's extra cool that we came up, we had a, a situation, and we actually worked out like ten times better the way that uh, things went. You guys dropped in week two, and then we we're like, you know, it was a growler draft only, and then you guys had a fantastic idea to do a bonus drop, you know, right before the holidays. Uh, of the beer and cans so uh, folks can get it to go which is super super cool um let's show the beer because you guys went over and above by the way as well we're gonna talk about the merch too yeah um this is the link up beer from foam right here oh it's not doing it here we go yeah, let's well, tap yeah i know that's okay here we go look at that um boys talk let's talk about the beer to get going look at that beautiful I think Bob can take that one away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like you said, we had, uh, it was a two-parter. And so we did, uh, the first one was on draft and foam. Um, we have kind of a interesting setup that works for us. So we have our original location down in Burlington, uh, right on the waterfront there, Seven Barrel Brew House. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's where we started. And that's uh, where all the beer came from originally. And now that we have our production brewery out in Hinesburg, where we do all the canning, Ooh. we kind of use our original location as a like a test kitchen. And so pretty much all the beer that we end up developing for cans comes from, you know, the development side of things down at the Burlington waterfront. And so it was a perfect system for this too. So we did the first uh, the draft version of it. And we um, then, you know, made sure that everything was good to go and set it to Heinsberg for the can. So we did, um, we used Vermont malt house Pilsner malt as the base. And then uh, we used flaked wheat from NEK grains up in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Uh, pretty much all of the malt that we use down in Burlington is uh, from Vermont. And uh, then again, also from Vermont, um, the first hopping that we did was Champlain Valley Cascade. Uh, it's a hop farm, a uh, 40 acre uh, trellised hop farm in Starksboro, Vermont. Uh, and then um, we all of the hoppy beer that we do has hops from Vermont, from Champlain Valley hops, and also from um, Whitefield Hop Yard up in East Hardwick, Vermont. Uh, and then we dry hopped it with some of our favorites, Citra and Sabro. So it has a nice, like, coconutty, kind of citrus fruity character that we know and love down at Foam. Um, and of course, the uh, hazy, of course, IPA, single IPA. It's quite enjoyable in my opinion. Definitely finishes pretty dry, medium to dry. 
Love it. The the nose is insane. Yeah. It is so bright. Um, I'm desperate to put this in. Guys, <laughs> cheers. 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 Stunning. It tastes like a foam beer. I feel like wow. I could do that blind and I'd be like, that's foam. <laughs> <laughs> that's the yeast, I would imagine, right? That's the real signature. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's a lot of, uh, you know, the love and care that goes into it, really. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the yeast, the yeast obviously, is uh, creates that, you know, the round kind of, there's almost like a nuttiness in the beer, I think. Hmm. Um, and that's definitely from the process, the yeast, and, and uh, depending on what malt goes into it, of course. But yeah, there's, we always say nutty, like yeah, a nutty yeah. quality, but I don't know if that really, if people get that idea. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a nice uh, like a lot of fun, like, like a very subtle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, 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 that's a good yeah, way yeah. of describing it. Say that again. Sounds I think it, it cut out when I, uh, <laughs> I cut out when I, I think I talked over you. It's like a very subtle character that we've always like attributed to from the first time we noticed it. Um, in one of our beers that it, you could almost say more like a marzipan or something character. Okay. Um, mm. Yeah, man, this is, it's kind of fascinating. It's got this, like, like you said, finishes like pretty dry. So I feel like it's pulling at the cheeks there a bit. The, um, the, there's a lot of citrus in that. The coconut is a little on the subtle side, which is probably what you would want. Um, yeah. Sabro. I feel like Sabro is such a, um, what's the word? Polarizing. Uh, Polarizing, polarizing <laughs> hop. I love it personally. I was stoked when I see this, but I've seen other people aggressively <laughs> not be into Sabro, which I find weird. But oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, we have like... uh, we have a friend that comes into the brewery a lot, and he hated Sabro when it first came out. But I think it's an acquired taste too. I, I liked it from the get go, but mm -hmm. uh, he's come around to it, I guess you could say. And maybe it takes. Of course, time. I think you know, kind of. Toning it down a little bit, blending it with other certain hops changes the character quite a bit. And uh, so, I mean, that's basically my job at Foam is kind of figuring out what that is, dialing it in, uh, trying to find the right hop combos. And so um, we use we use that a lot. And Citra obviously goes into a lot of the different beers because it's a nice complimentary hop or accentuating hop. And then uh, all the Vermont stuff is pretty unique as well. So it really kind of balances out or at least complements other hops from whether it's, you know, the West Coast or New Zealand, Australia, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, there really is terroir in Vermont in, yeah. in the hop yards and a cascade that's grown in Vermont like that went into this beer is totally different than a cascade that's grown in, uh, you know, the West Coast somewhere. And uh, it's pretty cool to see that and taste it and and have a, you know, something to talk about to people and kind of express that and i i love that it's a cool thing oh yeah i was about to say the so you mentioned that all the beers have something from champlain valley is and you chose cascade specifically i mean i guess that's giving it that sort of i feel like there's like a touch of pine in the back end and um it's a little bit grassy is that sort of delivering that those kind of vibes in this particular beer and and was that yeah, totally. intention? yeah there's there's two hop farms that we work with in vermont uh the Champlain Valley is actually the largest hop farm on the East Coast, apparently. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, the other one that we work with up in East Hardwick, Whitefield Hops, it's a very small, it's a complete op complete opposite. It's a one acre hop yard. Um, but in this particular beer with Champlain Valley Cascade. And yeah, I, there is uh, there is some subtle grassy notes, I guess, in there. Um, pine. A little bit of pine as well. But the Cascade and Centennial in particular from Vermont, also expresses a lot of the citrus qualities that you would want from a, you know, like a, I don't know, citra hop, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, it's, it is different. It's not quite like citrus forward. It's not quite pine forward. And that's what I'm talking about with that terroir. It's just, it's just different. And uh, so it's, it's really fun to kind of manipulate and mess around with those hops growing locally. And whether we do, we do plenty of beers that are just, you know, straight up from, you know, Vermont ingredients, but it is fun to kind of use them to change the flavor of another hop that is, might be a more prominent flavor like Sabro, for example, mm. um, and try to find that sweet spot. Yeah. And personally, I always find like, uh, the Vermont Cascade and Centennial to put forth a lot of like 
melon like uh, honeydew and cantaloupe characteristics more so yeah. than they typically would on the west coast yeah totally um which is, is it's definitely subtle but it's there i think in this beer um and it's it's quite unique compared to those hops on the west side of the u.s interesting west yeah. side's the best side east side is the best side it's the best side it's not a not great a hops, <laughs> great great hops great water great food great yep. everything great beer just yeah Vermont's it's glorious always, uh, always we haven't been here we were in Vermont, but of course. We were obsessed. We used to live in Montreal. We were so... in Montreal for 10 years, and we just moved to Ontario. And the we were um, in Vermont the weekend before the lockdown. Yeah. So, like, the, it was March 6th, 7th, and 8th. I'll never forget. Yeah. 2020. So, we, would, we mm -hmm. went to, like, Bar Hill, and the late, people were, like, starting to wear masks. Yeah, there was, like, to, sanitizer um, starting sanitize. to be on the table and stuff like that. Yeah. And I remember, oh, yeah. like, sanitizing and being like, all right, are we supposed to be, like, ridiculous about it? I'm already a germaphobe, so it was pretty yeah. easy to get in there for me. Like, yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, get, I get to thrive in my element now. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it was, like, just the yeah, beginning. Like, oh, it's going to be two weeks. It's going to be horrible. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And like, literally that's yeah. <laughs> and we haven't been back since. Um it's been Oh uh, really? Yeah. So the, well I had like my when you get citizenship, I I finally got yep. it this year and they make you in front like they're not in person yet, so they make you hold it up to the screen, you cut up your PR card, which means wow. I can travel on my Australian passport, but I don't know how I would get back in. It's a bit risky. Like it's a risk and oh, right. being that they were extra you know nuts with people coming over and all this stuff i was like it's not worth the risk so i should have in the next bit and then i know whilst we're further away we're like all right well then you can dip over and then be like all right like make it a time of it so i'm excited I will miss to... it being like an hour and a half away though that was yeah. a true privilege yeah, back yeah. Then. literally a... when we were making our list about like whether or not to leave we were like oh we're gonna be so far the number one thing of those are one thing i swear on our notes and... app was like we're gonna be far away from vermont now um it's yeah. just the greatest place man it's like yeah. it's just so beautiful and it's, it was... pardon yes please do yes yes. Long. yes it's um this is have you guys been around like southern or like when did you we're just outside of toronto have you been around this area yeah we, uh, we've done toronto a couple times but uh not too much exploring outside of that we, we've been at the woods twice Sick. Um, we're by a uh, collective arts so we're you know, in their yeah, neighborhood you know, yeah they're from here from hamilton yeah so there's, oh, cool. Cool. there's a bunch of really good stuff sort of around here. And there's a few other folks you might know that would probably connect like Badlands and Third Moon and Barncat and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. Yep. You know those vibes. Yeah. Honestly, I think that would oh, be yeah. very cool um, to see more of that. Because I always felt that the Vermont, uh, sorry, the, the Quebec folks had a stronger connection with Vermont. A lot of people from here hadn't really been, probably because it might be six to eight hours to, to get there. Whereas for us, you know, door to door to Burlington was like less than two. Yeah. So it was like, oh, know, yeah. You know, just to our Trader Joe's yeah, just, on, uh, on Dorset Road. On Dorset Oof. Road. <laughs> yeah. Trader Joe's is the greatest place on there. That's the other thing <laughs> that we get people <laughs> to ship us from the States. It's, uh, yeah. Sorry. We, we, I don't know, man. <laughs> Atwater Market up in Montreal. That's, that's okay, Atwater right Market's at. pretty special. Yeah. Atwater's fire, too. Yeah. Yeah. So it you is. Know. I feel like you just appreciate what's not in front of you. <laughs> and it was, yeah, like, yeah, totally. Yeah. As soon as like yeah, it was TJ's was the greatest. We had a cooler just for it. You we even bought like the frozen stuff and like <laughs> packed the whole thing up and it was it was it ridiculous so going over the yeah exactly or the uh, the two dollar wine or whatever yeah. three dollar wine <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah they had yeah. some deals they have they, the, they have the deals going. It was just funny like coming over the border and just being like yeah we have groceries because you got groceries and, and some, some beer. beer. And then they just focus more on the groceries. You just kind of hold the receipt. And they're like, okay, Yeah, cool. once you got all the receipts out, and I take my hat off so I look more respectable. And you're like, all right. <laughs> yeah. and they, then oh, they're yeah, like, the you're like, ignore the you two the cases yeah. of beer. Just in the ignore back. that. Just ignore some. that and just think about it. about yeah. these, these cheese twists. Yeah. <laughs> um, we digress. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Vermont is the greatest. So um, the beer is spectacular. Exactly what I hoped. I wanted to ask you guys, is it the same beer that was in um, that was on draft? Like same recipe and yep. everything? Yeah. It was. Sick. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's uh, kind of what I was saying before. Um, we, we basically create a re like a recipe down at uh, mm. foam and the seven barrel and then scale it up for cans. So Sick. we're uh, um, just figuring out process stuff, you know, uh, ingredient inputs mm -hmm. and such, and then make sure, you know, people like it usually. <laughs> and then, okay. um, and if it fits into the schedule, of course, and then, uh, uh, the annex is what we call the Heinsberg foam brewery. And Ooh, so they'll, nice. they'll brew a larger batch and can it. Okay. Oh. When did this is a little out of scope, but like, I didn't realize that there was a second spot where, um, when did you guys open that? I believe that we went over there, uh, 
the beginning of 2017. It felt like a lot later than that, but um, I think it was early, yeah. very early 2017. So what we were doing, wow. the reason that we did that is because uh, we realized that, you know, people wanted to take beer to go in cans. We were selling a lot of growlers, but cans, you know, they just travel better. It's easier to crack when you're hiking a mountain or whatever it might be. And so we just don't have the space down at foam. If you've ever been there, it's pretty small, especially yeah. at that time. Yeah. And we uh, looked, we looked uh, at a, at a next door space that was available. Yeah. I mean, it's insane to think about that now, but yeah, we yeah. considered, we considered uh, where our current offices are um, putting in a canning line and stuff like that, but it would have just been absolutely insane. And <laughs> I'm really glad that we didn't do that for many reasons. We could have like released maybe 50 cases a week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and not, it would have been insane yeah. to, to put, but, put a canning line and production facility there. We but. still did something insane after that, uh, yeah. which was um, we plugged in some tanks down there after obviously we got our uh, brewer's license and stuff for Heinsberg. Um, but we were still brewing on the seven barrel brew house and uh, in Burlington in Burlington and trucking the wort over in, no. in a stainless tote fermenting it in Heinsberg, canning it, and then bringing it back. So it was just, that didn't wow. last for too long, unfortunately. Um, we ended up uh, getting a brew house put in there and commissioned that. And uh, I guess the rest is history. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't so, know that. I always just thought everything was happening in that one place. I honestly did too, which yeah. is I mean, nice. it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, I imagine there's no tap room there, though. No, no, it's it's not yeah, that's really. Right. We were doing we do uh, some can sales out of there. We did. Um, we did. We during did. COVID and everything, we we definitely did some can sales for a couple of years uh, there. But there's not really a space to like actually create a vibe, which is so much mm. of I think the experience of coming to foam. So um, we always have thought about putting something interesting in there, but it felt after a while like very forced uh, and just not not quite what we want so yeah maybe someday in the sense. future okay that makes sense that's probably why we weren't aware of it then i remember when you well, before next, time you're, next time you're in town we'll take you over there check it out yeah so definitely let you guys know because it's uh it's been on my mind a lot lately to be honest now that the passport is uh imminent Closer? imminent yeah. Um, yeah, I remember yeah. my friend, I have a good friend there in Shelburne who would always go get stuff for me when we were going regularly and he would have to go when you guys were very like doing the drops and he would have to go like 10 AM on a Friday. She'd have to leave work and then come and go get the cans. Like, yeah, can we fall back in this or that? So it was, I remember that and then becoming now every time we went, like I had to do a calculation for immigration where every time you leave Canada and I think we went to Vermont, it's only yeah. like 12 times, but we didn't go to Vermont without going to phone. So I remember it becoming oh, easier yeah. every time. It was it's we like it was family a, came from England and we family came from them. England. Yeah, we brought we them went, over. Yeah. That was oh, wow. yeah, yeah, like that was a that's thing. a really cool story. That was beautiful. It was a good sunny. I yeah. remember that was a nice one. It was, was like because you're on the patio. It's the greatest location. Yeah, it's, so it's like it's right just off downtown. There's always plenty of parking. The food is always fire at the pop ups. Last time we went, I think it was like uh, some sort of Mexican stuff. Yeah, that was cool. Cheese you had that boards. really good night that time with the band. Was, was yeah, the band's always yeah, you guys got a good vibe. You it's, have a good vibe. Every I wasn't. Time. We're yeah. not like boosting just because you guys mentioned the last time you were in Vermont was uh, the week before the state shut down for COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys know this, but we have a restaurant now called Deep City. No it's way. at the other end of the building in our uh, in our in that original space, just on the other end. And okay. uh, we very untimely had our soft opening that same week and uh <laughs> we had planned on doing you know the sit down dinner never really take out or anything like that yeah. and uh it really changed our plans around a little bit yeah um, but it was that week though it was literally the week before the state shut down yeah Jeez. so so we must never have forget yeah. that yeah. yeah did you end up is it all good now it's all good, settled. It's no, it's all good. We, made it it through. we made it through okay good I but love we, it, it yeah. was a big scramble we had to do uh stuff that we weren't planning on doing in you know at the you know, flip of a hat and yeah. um but there's a lot of growing that happened in that time so yeah. a lot of uh a lot of things came out of that dark period yeah um including you know perspective changes we were never distributing beer uh in cans not even in the state of vermont previously mm -hmm. and because we couldn't have people come in which was what we always did and always planned on doing um we had to sell cans out in the market for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that was kind of eye opening. We had, no, we didn't want to do that in the past because we thought it might cannibalize the, you know, people coming into foam and buying cans if it was available, but 
it uh, it actually was a really good thing. And so that's just one example of many that kind of was a perspective. silver lining. Yeah, silver lining, perspective change, and yeah. um, an opportunity to grow. So that was good. That's yeah. awesome. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that happened. So Sankyem, for example, like the partners in Link Up, they they are like a pandemic brewery where like they started like right at the pandemic. Like it's interesting where you take on this large thing and then they're like, oh no, the world's shut down. Sorry, no one's going to come by. Nobody's going to do anything. So oh, yeah, exactly. Like, out. oh, this is going to completely change yeah. the plan. Yeah. It's no, already I'll, scary. Add a little bit more scary. Add a little bit it. more, yeah. Add all your investments into there to, to make it a little yeah, bit more exactly. scary too. At least it seems to seeing the light a little bit more yeah. at this particular point moving into 2023, which is uh, super positive. Thank goodness. Um, I, without derailing it, because I want to deep dig into that so bad. It's this is taking the because this is such a specific podcast, and I want to do normal shit. But um, <laughs> he, wants to talk, he wants to talk to you. For I want to talk. Yeah, hours. this would be a long <laughs> one. This would be a dangerous <laughs> one. Um, the the label art because uh, you guys really, really, really went over and above with this. Uh, you had a um, a young lady, uh, young lady Liza, come through and do the yep. art, and not only, and this is the first time this has happened, by the way, that you guys mentioned doing merch, and you did merch, and uh, I don't know if it's me or you should show, but you had the label art on the back of this shirt, so it's, this is the beautiful part. We did a link up shirt in a very similar way. We collabed with a black artist last year at some point, and it was a long sleeve. And we had the thing here. I love it because it's the same same concept, but you took it in a in your own direction. So we've got yeah. the the three brands here on the front. If I can just spin around to show the back, which will match the. Am I doing it? Yeah, yeah, you're kind of there. I'm kinda you're kind of there. there. Hang on, yeah, go. Bob's wearing it too. Uh, I wasn't yeah. wearing mine, but it's it's got some dog hair on it, so I wasn't. <laughs> <lost> it <on. laughs> I yeah, respect you're all, it. You're, you're all um, good. This is this beautiful it's long so sleeve. Cool. I was just saying this. It's like the way that it sits. It sits. To, I bet you people probably thought this was a sweater. Like it feels. It's it's really thick and yeah, heavy. Really thick. Um, super comfortable. Yeah. Talk about the um the collab with Liza and the the art and then how that led into the the shirt too, guys. Because this is it's incredible. That's that's Johnny. Take it away. Tell us. Yeah. Johnny. So uh, I first met Eliza. Back in, I guess, maybe summer 2020, fall 2020, um, we were pretty much still in lockdown, but people were starting to go out and about, like outside and things like that. And there was a, a really cool BIPOC um, market on down the road at an elementary school next to where we live. So uh, we swung down there. We were just like shopping in general, checking it out uh, and fell in love with the work. Um, bought a couple of small pieces that day. And then got her contact info and and kind of kept thinking about it. Um, so so she had this one piece in particular that said like she doesn't need you. That that was like this really big beautiful piece that I think personally I think she way underpriced. But <laughs> <laughs> in a statement, <laughs> statement piece, but I was just like it's like one of those things that just like I I was personally like I shouldn't have that in my room to like think about every day. Like I don't know you being in a a privileged position at foam of where you come from. I was just like, you maybe feel a lot of responsibility and stuff like that. And it's like, you don't need, people don't need you all the time. And so I, I just thought it was an absolutely beautiful piece and a nice reminder that um, everybody has their own path and like power in themselves and stuff like that. So that kind of transitioned into uh, us working with her on a can called She Doesn't Need You um that we released probably a little over a year ago now yep and we've worked with her on a number of other things she's had art in the brewery um but wasn't when... she the first artist sorry to interrupt wasn't she the first artist that had uh art at deep city too second artist second. I think. yeah yeah jamie was the first one oh, right, right. um yeah jamie tam yeah but yeah so long story short uh when uh jacob first brought up link up to us jacob and danielle first brought it up uh, we kind of started thinking about it. He brought up Eliza and it just seemed like a perfect fit. So uh, I talked to her and she was all on board. And okay. then, yeah, like this fall, like we had talked about it for probably plus at this point. And this fall, it was actually a pretty quick project. She had to turn around and she was all gun ho. So it was, it was pretty cool. She uh, put together our work for the can and the, and the shirts and everything in a very short period of time. Yeah. So yeah, very talented. Awesome. Yeah. Very talented artist. Yeah. Absolutely slayed it. It's so cool. Yeah, man. It's it's so cool, you guys. If, if you listening to it, definitely go to you know, link up Instagram or Phone's Instagram. You better see it uh, in full mm -hmm. um, with all the merch and how it looks as well. 
Uh, the merch was just such a, a, a an amazing sort of like way to top off doing this. Yeah. Um, being that you sort of get, you got the long version, like I got the long version. Tiff's got the, the cropped top. version, yeah. so it's sort of like at the at the waist there. Uh, if that's how you prefer to rock it. So you got a couple different options. It's got the you know the can art on the back as I poorly attempted to show, but it's um <laughs> it's super dope, guys. Like it's it's just such a like a, a thoughtful way to execute. And and one thing that um. I don't know if I told you guys separately when we were talking about it a, a month or so ago, but the we don't see the label art until it's typically on online. Mm-hmm. So like for us, it's extra cool because like say if BOS and Foam did a collab, we would talk about every element of the beer, the name, the ingredients, the hops, blah blah blah. But for Link Up, we're just like call it Link Up, do your thing. So it's it's sick to see every brewery approach, you know what Link Up means to them in their own mm-hmm. way and then see that you know the beer is always fantastic but even i think the art is the most fun to see yeah because we have no expectations at all and it's just like yeah you- i mean it's your first experience with mm-hmm. the beer too exactly. that, that's it this is that because we wait by the way we got this what this is thursday right now so it arrived on monday or tuesday but specifically did not drink it because we drank every single link up beer with the uh with the folks behind the beer on the pod which is a much more special experience for us. And, I, you know, it's cool if I had it here beforehand and got excited, but I was like, no, 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 no. This was, this was a little tough, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, no, 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 no. We, we made it work. I respect that. Yeah, I feel like it's like, you know, we've kept this run so far, 23 yeah. episodes. We've done it every time. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, let's uh, let's keep that going. But no, it's just so super dope. You guys really, really delivered on the whole, excuse me, package with this. And it really shows your dedication to the mission, excuse me, of diversity in, uh, in beer. And that, as a segue there, um, I'd love to hear a bit more about sort of, you know, what about that link up mission of, you know, diversity in craft beer sort of spoke to you guys. It's clearly, it sounds like it's kind of in the DNA of the brewery and something that you guys personally, um, you know, feel very strongly about. Yeah. I mean, I'll say, say my piece at least. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, living in Vermont, obviously, you know, uh, it's a, it's a small state and, People say, you know, it's not a very diverse place, a lot of white people here, um, but there, it's not necessarily true in Chittenden County. There's a, there's a lot of different cultures, there are a lot of different people that uh, are in this area in where we're sitting right now in Winooski at John's house. Um, it's all sorts of different types of people and it's pretty amazing. Um, but there's also, you know, there is a separation to some degree because a lot of the people that uh, live in Winooski in particular um, are coming from, you know, they're um, like refugee kind of situations where they're they're placed here. And uh, so there is a disconnect. And that's something that talking with you guys earlier uh, in the, I guess, what, late summer, fall, um, you know, that was something that I was thinking about after we had chatted about that stuff is like, how can we connect our communities and strengthen that tie because it's important. Mm. And, uh, and then um, another thing too, that I thought was really cool, kind of like a ripple effect uh, from that conversation that we had had previously was uh, when I was talking to, you know, my coworkers at foam, um, people behind the bar, other brewers, uh, specifically Olivia, who is uh, our newest production member. Um, and the first woman production member uh, on the foam team, uh, which is just cool in general. She uh, was interning with us last summer and fell in love with brewing. Super smart person. Um, she's for now. And so I was telling her about the conversation that we had had. Anyway, long story short, she uh, she was very excited about it, and that generated excitement, even more excitement for me. Um, and she started throwing around some ideas and how we could maybe start being, you know, I don't want to say more welcoming, but like more, um, have more of an outreach, I guess, Mm -hmm. to the people in our community that we probably wouldn't necessarily have that same connection with. And uh, so we were just talking about how we could do certain events and kind of just chatting it out. And it's cool because it brings it to the forefront and then people, it's on people's minds. It's been on my mind a lot. And uh, it's exciting. And I think that it's only a good thing. And I get, I mean, that's the point of this, right? Is like to create that connection and bring it to the forefront and have people talk about it and try to like bridge that gap. 
So it's, it's all across the board been a great experience for me personally. And uh, I'm really excited to continue working on this stuff. And I'm really thankful that you guys included us because, you know, it opens up people's minds and, and, and hearts as well. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, what I would just say is that I think that we've, um, we've all had our own unique experiences, but I think, uh, in the last few years, we've been definitely thinking about this more so than previously. It's, it's, I think, uh, it's for us in Vermont, like it, it kind of started off as like a few, like many years ago, like, oh, this is a very male dominated industry, blah, 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 blah. Um, but then also realizing that just because this is Vermont, like Bob was saying, and it's a lot of white people that like there is a diverse community here and there's a lot of people to engage with and there's a lot of opportunity that, like that i think that what's so great about this is it's it can be difficult it's not that it's an excuse to not be better but it can be difficult as like a uh, white man that own a brewery i mean we have a our female partner danny but like it can be difficult to figure out how to engage and how to what steps are the right steps to make the brewing industry more diverse and more inclusive and more welcoming. And I think that that's why link up is so beautiful in the sense that it's like, it's providing resources and it's providing connection for both individuals looking to get into the industry as well as brewers looking to make that like extend the arm. So I guess I, that's, I think like a pretty missing link in this conversation that link up is fulfilling is like what, there's a, I think there's a lot of people that understand that there's a bit of a imbalance here and, and something that can be made better. And like, but it's not as simple as just desiring to do something like we can make a lot of missteps in the process of trying to fix a problem. So like having mm -hmm. guidance and how to do that is, is pretty cool. So that's an interesting yeah. thank you. That's interesting. Hey Matt. It's, no, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it feels always like the least we can do to do it. And I wanted to also mention that, Jacob told me I was very also we were very happy to know that you know you guys had already known each other mm -hmm. to to build you know to bridge that gap with the connection but they went down twice they talked to you about it the first time and then the second time you guys brought it up to them he told me so that really to me really just showed that like you know, getting you guys involved to be honest felt kind of like ah oh, like you know fingers crossed like, you know <laughs> hopefully you'd be down but the fact that you guys brought it up to them the second time they came back down um, and so you guys was, uh, was yeah, it just extra shows like cool. a willingness and like eagerness to be part of the discussion and the change. And I you think. see the value yeah. and you know, this is not like some surface level thing. This is like yeah. a, it's not just like a, a, an exercise in looking good or, uh, what's it called? Um, virtue signaling. It's, it's really true right. something right. to connect with the community, mm -hmm. uh, based on the examples you guys just, uh, just explained, which to yeah, us, it feels authentic. Yes, 100%. very much so. And, and even from kind of like what John was saying, too, you know, it's like it there is, you know, there are people that just do things for the image or and they don't actually really care at all. I mean, whether it's using, you know, promoting that they're using local ingredients and they're throwing a handful of malt into a, you know, 50 barrel <laughs> brew. It's like <laughs> that's not authentic. That's that's marketing. And yeah, you know, and like it's and like we have we've had chronic issues with that because you know coming from different places in the past um where that seemed to be the norm of like kind of just marketing something that wasn't real in my opinion at least mm. it's like i it like we had a problem with like the the local ingredients that we we're using like t telling the story you know and saying because it felt like we you know it wasn't authentic and like people were gonna you know think that it was bullshit. We wanted to do the right thing because of the right thing. Yeah, exactly. Not just for a marketing purpose. But then on the same side, you're a business and you're like, okay, so how, after not talking about doing the right thing for a while, we're now figuring out like, okay, like what's the right way? Well, it's because we realized, to... you know what, we actually are supporting local farms and stuff like that. And, and it's like, we're only doing the far like the people that we're working with a disservice not to tell that story. Sure. And it's kind of a similar thing, you know, it's like, but this is even more, I guess, intense is like, because it's good for our whole team of people, you know, on the brewing side, like front of house, the restaurant, every, everyone involved to have this stuff on their minds and be contributing members to it. And I think that 
it's really important. That's a whole other aspect of it is like, we're, uh, you know, we, we have a very open dialogue with um, everyone at foam and or, you know, under the foam umbrella. And like, everyone has a voice, everyone has an opinion. And I only think that's been a great thing to have mm -hmm. different perspectives. Because, you know, we had there's, you know, 75 plus people that are a part of foam at this point. And uh, everyone has a different wow. story, yes, everyone yes. has a different perspective and background. And I mean, that's all that's between, you know, the brewery, the front of house restaurant, restaurant. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, insane. it's awesome. And, and I think, uh, I think that hearing people out, and also contributing something for them to think about as well, and me to think about and everyone, I think that's a really good place to start. Mm -hmm. 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. And even so what you're mentioning about like, it is actually a disservice when you don't speak about it from for various reasons. So like even just from a business perspective, if you are supporting your community in a way, we know that people purchase like from the heart a lot. That's a big part of it, right? That's why like the shoe brand was so big back in the day. It always gave to the kids in Africa. Tom's. Tom's. For example, you know, like you yeah, know yeah, exactly. that people purchase from the heart. So it's like if you, and we're like that. So if you, if I ever see, we're like, every time, we're like, if we see something that's like local X or something that says like, hey, we're supporting X community, we're like, yeah, we should buy that. So there's a lot of people who do yeah, that. Yeah, that from Vermont. Yeah, yeah, actually, Vermont was the a huge part. Oh, yeah, stuff. because even when we were with Giles at um, Hostel Temporary, Hostel Temporary, you guys know us in Warren? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So, it's like, we thought it was, yeah, yeah when he yeah, was like, he oh, the it. burger comes from, he's like, yeah, Five there's a farm the there, road. and there's a cow there. We're, like, the we're like, oh, we got to buy this. Like, everything is like, this just so cool. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And a lot yeah. of people purchase that because they're like, oh, if I buy this from you, that means I'm giving to this. So it makes you also feel good and you're supporting. Mm. And farmhouse so tap and grill, how they have it on the wall. Exactly. Like, where the cheese is from, where the meat is from. You feel good about oh, buying. Yeah. It, it makes people excited. So I think when you do that, people will buy from you, which is good for you and good for your business, but it's also good for the other business because the more you thrive and the more you can buy from that local business, the more everybody is doing better. So exactly. it's super, it's super exactly. important. Yeah. And I think even when we're talking from the diversity perspective too, and even as a black person, even knowing and seeing that a brewery cares about certain things makes me obviously support them more. It's just the same type mm. of scenario as well. So it's good for yeah. so many reasons. And if I know more about you than I tell my friends, then they come, maybe someone else works and it just continue, go, ends up working for you. It just creates a whole cycle. So I think it's a great yeah, thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And specifically with the link up uh, beer in cans, I mean, it, w it was cool to have the draft first and then mm -hmm. the cans because it kind of extended the period of time that we got to talk to people walking in the door that didn't yeah. know what was up with it. And so, I mean, and, you know, not to, you know, not to pat our crew on the back, I guess, but uh, I, our people like front of house people love talking about the beer, love talking about what goes into it, the thought behind it, the artwork, like whatever, you know, whatever idea kind of spurred that thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so, you know, it started with the draft, like I said, and then um, now people are taking cans to go and it's cool hearing because I pretty much live at our original location of home. Uh, I'm there a lot. And so I hear, you know, what people are saying, um, whether it's good or bad, but uh, I hear, you know, I hear that I hear the front of house people talking to customers and telling the story and it's pretty cool. It's and then to see like the positive feedback from people trying the beer and like asking more questions about what link up is mm -hmm. and just getting involved, like that's involving our community as well. Yeah. And even people outside of our community, people that are traveling up here from who knows where um, it's just spreading that word. And that's exciting for me. Definitely. Yeah, that's, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I like hearing that the staff are, are, are enjoying talking about it and connecting with the with the community on that. Mm -hmm. um, that's extra cool. And speaking of connecting with the community, I mean, I would you guys, I imagine, would have done a bunch of different, you know, sort of community outreach and things like that in the past, whether it was around diversity or other things. Like, what are some of the other things that you guys have done that have sort of worked really well to sort of connect foam with, you know, the the, the whether it's the state or the city or the county, whatever it may be. So I think that um, in, as, in the sense of like BIPOC diversity, I think that there's a lot more that we can do. And that's a, a big part of why we're excited about being part of LinkUp. Uh, outside of that, I think that like in general, we constantly host community gatherings, whether it's music or makers markets or 
uh, women entrepreneurs panel or things like that. Like we're, we definitely try to just be an open space, like a avenue or conduit for anybody who's interested in being creative or sharing a new endeavor. Uh, we, we've always, since day one, try to do that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that, and I think we've done a pretty good job and we're always getting better, but I think especially, um, I, I think we still have a long ways to go and probably mm-hmm. always will. I think there, there's always room to improve. I think something that Bob and I have talked about since day one is, uh, always be better. Yeah. Don't necessarily strive to be the best, but always be better. So, yeah. And, uh, one thing that comes to mind to, um, kind of contribute to this question is, uh, um, I mentioned Olivia, uh, our, you know, woman, uh, rock star <laughs> and um so uh, i i'm sure you guys have heard of the pink boot society yes um and so uh she expressed interest in being a part of that and so she signed up and she's a member of that and then that ha- uh, kind of led to bringing together the other women of foam and getting together and she's leading it off and they've been meeting about brewing a beer and with Danny, our, our partner, um, to like, and so they, they came up with the style of beer that they want to brew and Olivia is going to kind of lead the charge on all of that on like the production side of things. And, uh, it's really cool to watch that happen as well, because, uh, a lot of the women have come up to me and just been super excited about, you know, the process and like, you know, it's, it's cool because they are they are so involved and they're there like they're they're trying the beer they're talking about the beer they're selling the beer it's like to like kind of incorporate that and also just you know to be a group that like maybe wouldn't necessarily have that experience otherwise um it's been fun to watch and also been fun to watch olivia kind of just like really own it and uh so i think that that's something that Danny wanted to do more consistently. So this is the first one that we're going to be doing in the next couple of weeks here, I think in two weeks. Um, well, they're going to be doing it. And, uh, and Danny was suggesting maybe we do that quarterly or even more often. And then we have, uh, we have a lot of talented people in our foam community and um, there's artists and there's musicians and just a lot of amazingly talented people. And, uh, and so I was, thinking um or i was talking to one of the ladies and she is an artist herself and maybe we could do like a label like one of the ladies can do the label for a can beer in the future where they all do the brew together um so that's that's one thing that comes to mind but uh like john said it's it's always an evolving thing and uh it's always a opportunity to try to be better yeah no, I love that. I think that's really cool. And, and that's the inclusion part of it all, right? So yeah. when you think about diversity, diversity is just like, oh, we've hired people and they're here and you can right. vis- visually see that they exist here. But inclusion is letting them lead something, letting them have the say in something. And that's right. the key part. So it isn't just yeah. about bringing them in. It's like, do they have a say? Are they actually a part of the organization mm-hmm. in any way? And so I think that's oh, yeah. really, really important. And then even on the other piece that you were saying, John, too, about the venues and even for breweries, that's something to always consider. It's like you have this beautiful space. A lot of the times you have this gorgeous tap room. If you want to bring more people in, it's in your interest to just be like, hey, we can host you. I could I would love to have gone to any women's Mm -hmm. entrepreneurship event and it would be at like foam. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? So like that's like, though, that's how you bring more people in. Because all of a sudden they're like there, they host, they drink the beer. They're like, oh, what's going on here? Like, What's this place? So that's like another really great route to getting different people inside your brewery and exposing them yeah very cool and danny had organized that event she was she uh got involved with that and so it was yeah it was cool um she met a bunch of uh, (laughs) women that owned businesses in in uh well there's 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 like the organization that does that they Mm -hmm. host the the panels but yeah yeah, i'm I'm, like she got involved and so like she Mm -hmm. you know she kind of brought it to film but um yeah Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I think at the end of the day, we, sorry. <laughs> it's Technology. a delay. It's, it's a, a delay. Ter- love the <laughs> Go for it, Johnny. You're good. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I was going to say that uh, I think it's always been a very welcoming place. 
yeah. overall. And uh, we might be a little late to the game to having the first woman on the brew staff and stuff like that. But it's it's never really been like, I don't think we've really ever had any obvious issues of, of uh, discrimination. But like, I think like, we also haven't been as intentional as we were, have been trying to be in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So I think like we've naturally had a lot of female leaders. We've naturally had people come into the brewery, but we're now trying to look and learn and find out ways to make avenues for, for us to become more diverse and have more perspectives come into the brewery and be decision makers and things like that, which is, uh, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's an And, and to, be, to be completely fair, um, a, most of the stuff hasn't been really like, a. it's not like a planned thing. It just happens to be like, both of the GMs, uh, that we have for, on the foam side and the restaurant side are women. And it's because they are the best person for the job hands down. Mm -hmm. And so, like, it makes it like, you know, that makes it more like in my mind, authentic, not that it, there's what, <laughs> what I think about it, but, um, it just happens to be that the people that absolutely rock are the right fit for the job. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's so like, I think we're kind of spoiled, I guess you could say. Um, so it's it's not like, again, back to that authentic thing, it just happens to work out that way, which has been really nice. And so yeah, add a little bit of thought into the process. And I think it only can get better. Mm. Love that. Yeah, man, that's super dope. And when you guys are, um, say you have an opening for a position, what are the, and I'm saying, I'm asking this sort of in the context of, you know, we typically would ask this question as far as like, who are you, like, are you getting a diverse range of applicants without the outreach? Because I typically would find, and I imagine you already know, we already know the answers, mostly it's not, but because you guys are the first ones in the States and typically the US is a little more advanced than Canada as far as things like that maybe as far as just you know i feel like whenever we go to the states and we go into a brewery it's typically more diverse than the average canadian brewery maybe it's just by nature of population that you guys have 10x what we have um mm -hmm. so we usually find it's it's a little bit different but yeah just curious as to what that typically looks like if you've got a whether it's front of house back of house or the restaurant or whatever it may be what are those pools of applicants looking like I mean, I would say that it's definitely, um, it depends on, on what you're looking at. I think in, in gender, it's it's pretty diverse. Mm -hmm. um, I think when it comes to like race and ethnicity, it's, it's a lot more one-sided, which is probably coincides a lot with both the industry and Vermont. Um, and I think that's what we're talking about is like how to, how to make it feel more welcoming because as Bob said, like while Vermont and Burlington is largely white. There's a lot of other communities that are in the area for a variety of reasons. And like, there's ways to reach them. And, and we've had conversations, we like, we, uh, we've had conversations with people that could help in this capacity. I just, it's, it's not as simple as like, Hey, we're hiring for this position. I, I, we're trying to learn about how to properly do that outreach. Um, bring those applicants in and make them feel welcome and provide them like an on-ramp that feels good and, and positive for, for their position and the brewery and everything else. So, yeah, that's, dope. that's where we're at. And I think, I think there's, as I said, a long, a long ways to go. Um, and, and we're learning. And really that's all it is, man. Like that's all you can do is, is just pay attention and, and be like, okay, this is what we could do better. And so let's, Let's work on it. And, I, and it's very abundantly clear that you guys are, are quite passionate about this and, um, you know, have really taken it to heart. And, and it's very cool because I didn't realize how much that, you know, the conversation we had a bunch of months ago, you know, had impacted some of the things, you know, whether it's with Olivia and some of the conversation you guys have had. It's like, how can we, you know, um, actually, what's the word, like genuinely, authentically communicate and, you know, um, welcome these other communities into the brewery that just might not know it exists like imagine living right. in the vicinity of burlington vermont and not knowing that craft beer is a thing like that is bonkers <laughs> to me but it's a reality for a lot yeah. of people and, it, and it, that, that just shows that even through this sort of myopic um perspective of the world that a lot of us maybe as beer nerds tend to have that 
you know, there are a lot of people who don't know that this is a viable career with, you know, wonderful people. I feel like it, all, everyone is so nice in Vermont. It's insane. Yeah, it's beautiful. All the time. <laughs> it's perfect. It doesn't matter where yeah. you go to the point where you sort of trip us out. Like, yeah, in the beginning, we're like, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, <laughs> what's happening here? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I mean, coming from Montreal, everyone's pretty nice in Montreal. Canada's uh, pretty nice, too. I don't know, not all the way. Yeah, sometimes. Not all the way. I, yeah. and you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. but Income our French parts. people were crazy sometimes. Like, you go to New York or something yeah. like that, it's a little... Yeah, New York's mm -hmm. a bit more stodge, but... Um, I think that I mean, with... I, every, I feel like everyone in Canada is amazing every time. I grew up, uh, I grew up right on the border of Canada, like stone throw, like probably if you drew a straight line from my parents' house, maybe, maybe two miles. Okay, and sick. So, wow. Yeah, I, I would spend a lot of time up in Montreal when I was younger and still, still try to. Yeah. Had a little bit of a gap there for two years, but. Um, of course, yeah. as we all did. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I think, well, yeah. Another thing that. Sorry. Oh no! What now you were I'm saying, the... what you were saying was um, that not people know about the job. So that's also what we're trying to educate people on. That it's not just brewing craft beer. So I think that's the thing. You think like craft beer, and you're like, I'm a brewer, and then that's it. Where like we're trying to say like there's all these different. So it's a company in the end, and yeah. companies always have all these roles. So like there's so many. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's something that it's like also becoming more, more opportunity as we grow. Not that we're trying to be like a big brewery, but for the longest time, and we opened with five partners, five owners mm -hmm. that all had their own roles. And we had, so like, I mean, we had five employees additionally to that for the first like 18 months. You know what I mean? Like there were, and it was all front of house. And then it was like one production brewer. And like, so it's been very slow, methodical growth, uh, not super fast. We, we've had like a very small marketing department, all these other things. So like, we're kind of in the last few years, like realizing, oh, like there's, there's more positions outside of like beer tending and outside of production that we're going to be hiring for that really open up the world as well to who can come on the team. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Just well. in the sense of like, more yeah, positions more available. positions available that ha like is more diverse skill sets and yes. things like that, which is great. Mm, Cause we, awesome. uh, we chronically, um, I guess you could say hire from within too. So, mm -hmm. you know, like try to build people up that, uh, have been a part of foam, I guess. Um, and, but we always, we always open up the, everything to, to like the outside world. Um, and, uh, so we've brought on some people that have been outside of our circle more and more actually. And, uh, like, I think like John said, it, it is just, uh, the growth side of things is like, like you said, there was, there just was an opportunity. We couldn't, there were no opportunities for, uh, hiring an, another person cause we were a small team. And so that's been kind of exciting too. just, uh, kind of building the building blocks for the future of what we're doing. And like, you know, the restaurant was a, a big change for us and a lot more people involved. And um, so who knows where it's going to take us. It's a, it's been a wild ride. And uh, I think that there's a lot more to come hopefully. And um, so, yeah, we'll see. Love it. I love it. It's very cool. Um, the only other question I wanted to ask was, have you guys seen over time, the demographics of your audience because we all often talk about the industry you know, to, to, you know, we're just talking about like you know, the different roles and things like that so that's one side but the other side is really just introducing people to hey there's this cool liquid that you know tastes amazing and everyone is welcome to it and it's you know um have you guys seen any changes in in the demographics i imagine gender has been a big part of it which is fantastic have you noticed anything i'm more just curious from the Can you know, canadian to the us are you talking specifically about uh, like the like Drinkers. public like customer side yeah. of things or yeah, drink. people yeah, yeah. coming into the tap room and and buying your stuff that you guys see day to day? Like, hey, first it was a bunch of white dudes with beards, which typically is the way it goes. But yeah. over time, you would have been like, oh, hey, now it's probably fifty fifty, you know, gender wise. And then oh, now I'm seeing yeah. different communities because I feel like the tap room is one thing, and behind the counter is another thing. So that's more of a challenge, I think, than the tap room. Um, but I'd just be curious to a high level thing. Yeah. Um, I think definitely. Yes. Uh, and you kind of nailed it on the head. It's like, <laughs> you know, when we first opened in, uh, spring of 2016, yeah, it was like the neck beard, uh, you know, <laughs> classic. <bro. laughs> Nothing's really wrong with that. But, um, but, uh, yeah, it, you know, and that's like the, you know, target market, I guess. Right. It's like we, we were making beer that, uh, 
we had kind of an idea of who was going to show up. And um, it has us. been, yeah, <laughs> us, yeah, exactly. it has been really interesting watching the shift happen. And I think a big part of it is, uh, well, there's multiple reasons, but I think a big part of it is the fact that, uh, you know, we're not just making beer. We're not just a brewery. We have a massive connection with the artist community, which I'll let John obviously talk about in a second here, but uh, just from my perspective as the, as the essentially janitor, you know, brewer, <laughs> uh, the uh, it's been, it's been pretty awesome to like, and you feel it like the, the shows at foam, like the music aspect of it, that the art of that, and like just the actual, you know, the art, like, oh, like Eliza and, and everyone else like that. Um, the amazing artist community that we have here in, in Burlington, Vermont, just in general. Uh, I think that's also been a big part of the change in uh, the people that are coming to foam, whether they're coming you know, I, I know that they're not just coming for the beer anymore. They're coming for all of the other things that we're doing. And uh, it just feels really good. It's, it's easy to get caught up in like the chaos of, you know, our, I guess our business growing and like things changing and not really take a step back and appreciate, you know, what's happening around us or me. How far we've come. And, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, like, so every once in a while, and, and it seems to be at, those things like uh whether it's a unique show at foam music show at foam or um an artist uh i guess exhibit or uh maker's market i those are the times that i that hits me and i look around and i'm like wow this is a this is amazing and i uh it really makes me feel really good and um i think that uh that's why it's so important for so many reasons to have, you know, I guess, uh, different branches of, you know, our identity and like, it just kind of naturally happened that way because these are all things that we're into and things that we feel good about and want to like promote. And so that's where, you know, John, John's world is really that side of things and kind of managing the people that like make that happen. And uh, so I'll, I'll let John say his opinion now, but that's my perspective. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, guess I, I would completely agree with what you said as well as Bob. I feel like uh, it absolutely has changed. I feel like it definitely has become um, more diverse and inclusive across the board. Um, it, it definitely still to sometimes feels like it's not there yet, but that's probably going to take more than a couple of years of effort. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of different ways to reach out. I think that like, again, it, it always comes back to learning from others of like other people who have been successful on something. Like how have you reached other communities that felt good and didn't feel forced and like felt like you were bringing people in but not forcing it. And uh, uh, I yeah, I think we found that doing events really goes a long way. I mean, food really goes a long way. We do a lot of like food trucks and pop-ups in the past. Um, and also, yeah, I mean, just connecting with people around town and kind of sharing thoughts. I mean, I think that especially the last couple of years where we weren't traveling, like it's hard to get ideas from other breweries in other cities when you're not actually, yeah, you can talk to them, but you, you can't really see how effective they are. You're just... Mm trust like yes there's there's a lot of trust out there but i i guess it's just like it's exciting to be coming into back into a world where we can be traveling talking to people and seeing in first person like how effective different initiatives are and how ineffective other ones might be and things like that like w what is working at one brewery what's not working in another brewery and seeing how you can implement that does it apply to yours and things like that or even so, outside of breweries yeah yeah yeah, other exactly. other industries and stuff True. but it, it definitely goes a long way to to like we we don't really think of it this way because it's more just a part of our identity but uh having more than one product in the sense of like we have shows multiple times a week like we're a mini venue or we're, we're selling we're selling music we're selling beer we're selling food we're selling all these different things it's uh uh it's definitely changes i i guess like 
your audience and allows more people to come in and then you can share those experiences across the board. So, mm -hmm. so diversify your one offer. One last thing. Yeah, please. What'd you say? Diversifying your offerings is one way yeah, yeah, exactly. to attract more people. And, and on that, like the other thing that has changed the, uh, I guess like the audience is, and this is a kind of a weird one, but I've been thinking about it recently, um, is, uh, you know, we're coming up on seven years of being open. So like, you know, there's been a lot of marketing and, you know, like people talking about, you know, what we're doing. And so like, as the word of foam spreads outside of our kind of initial circle there, that has also brought in a lot of different people, like mm -hmm. people that might just kind of stumble in because they Googled like, you know, what, you know, a brewery to go to in Burlington. Um, and so like, there's, there's people that might not have even really ever drank a craft beer or <laughs> like True. they're, they're just going there for, because they heard like it was a good place to go and like mm. watch a show and have a beer or something. And mm. there's a lot of good behind that. And there's, you know, some bad too, I think like, uh, when you don't, when people are just like going there just to go there, but, um, it does increase the audience. And like, that's something that we have to kind of adjust to or like with, I guess. And, uh, it's just another thing to think about. And another thing to, to realize that, you know, we always should stay true to our identity. I think that's really important and drive that. But there are going to be people that are not craft beer geeks. <laughs> and like, there's going to be all sorts of people from different, you know, like desires when they're walking in the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it, it is part of all the other stuff that we're doing too. But I guess it is just also getting old, like getting older as a business and a brewery and like kind of the word just spreading. But that's been interesting yeah. to see. Yeah. yeah, I don't think anyone's ever. Said, this is why I love these podcasts because I don't think anyone's ever said that before. That the music, say, you know, you guys would, I imagine, I think, I feel like every time we've been there, there's been music, yeah. and it's always been different, whether yeah. it's a DJ or a band or whatever. That that is going to attract different crowds, yeah, and for even sure. if they're not familiar, like you said, they're not craft beer nerds or whatever, but they'll come in for the vibes, mm -hmm. and then they'll be like, "Oh, what's this all about? Well, I like beer. Give me something like this. Oh, okay, what's this hazy shit? Like, okay, sweet. <laughs> and then they'll. Yeah, it's yeah, it's perfect. Like, Can I have a Heineken, please? And Thank like, you. And you're like, well, oh, yeah. we don't, we don't have those. But we have to be um, better. Here's this. Yeah. And I feel like that's a. Yeah. It's 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 another avenue through. It's another gateway. It's another bridge. It's a learning opportunity from not being able to be into something else, and that is it. Whether it's the food side or the the music side, yeah. that's that's great. No one said that uh, yet, and I think that's fascinating. So being a multifaceted business yeah. allows, you know, you're essentially positioning yourselves as like a venue that happens to make some of the best craft beer in the, the country. country. Yeah. So it's like they can they can discover, it's facts, they can discover yeah. the beer through those, um, those other avenues which is amazing because yeah. it's sort of, you know, you, yeah. you do make, I feel like, uh, like new England IPAs are very much a, um, a more of a gateway beer than sure. people give them credit for. Even like when I think we were in New York at, um, what's that beautiful ramen spot? Oh, um, um shit. Ivan it's ramen. A, what'd you say? What's, what's it called? It? Ivan ramen. No, no, it's, it's a chain. It's yeah, Mama it's Fuku. Mama Fuku. We're at Mama Fuku. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And they oh, have, yeah. they have such a good beer selection. That's New York's amazing for that yeah. too, but the whole Northeast, everything happening in this area is so beautiful. But, um, we were there and like Craig had my friend sip, like she does not drink craft beer at all. And she sipped something from other half. I can't remember Green what it was. Yeah. Is. Okay. There you go from New, and I, New England IPA from, and she was like, Oh wow. She's like, it's so juicy. She's like, it's so like, it's so different than what I would think. So that is like, a gateway that people maybe underestimate to where I feel like someone new could come and then taste something and be like, oh, okay, this is great. And then it slowly makes you start trying more things. So it's like, not oh, always. Yeah. 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 I think that's so cool. And, that and people have in their heads, you know, it's like a hoppy beer. When they say hops, they think, I think a lot of the time they mean bitter, bitter. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, the, the dark side of the hop. Yes. <laughs> um, but <laughs> that's Ooh, why that's it's fun to one, the dark side be in the, the position hop. that we're in. Like, having the just having a conversation with people that are drinking yeah. the beer and like being able to explain that like a hop isn't just bitterness it's all these other things and yeah. and guess what there's like a ton of different hops 
and like they all contribute different flavors and uh like changing people's perspective kind of educating people in that sense i guess to what we're doing at least is uh awesome to see yeah. and like i've yeah. seen i've seen people like come in the door and be like i hate hobby beer and then so again part of that conversation is like what do you hate about hobby beer it's always better you know and then like uh i when you know when john and i were uh behind the bar working real slow <laughs> compared to <laughs> Compared to the new wave, John was better than us. Um, uh, was multiple, times, yeah, multiple times, uh, someone would come in and say, you know, I, I, I can't stand like IPAs or whatever. And so I'd be like, okay, let's, let's try this out. Give them uh, three samples, like uh, know, a Saison, a, like a light Pilsner and a double IPA. And nine times out of 10, they would pick the double IPA yeah. after saying they hate hoppy beer and they were like blown away that that was the one they picked they didn't know and yeah. uh and it's because of like that that change in perspective yeah. and uh <laughs> that's been fun yeah um and then uh the other thing too uh i i was meaning to say it earlier is uh just this is kind of a little bit off topic but the i think that there's a lot of uh opportunity in the future here to kind of connect uh, Canada and Vermont at least, um, because I feel personally a massive connection to, to you know, Quebec in particular, I guess, but that's just because I grew up right below it. Um, and we have a lot of friends in Canada and, uh, you know, there's a lot of exchange, there's a lot of movement across the border back and forth. Sure. And so again, after we had the conversation a couple months ago, um, I was thinking about how we could maybe be like kind of tie the communities together a little bit more just in the sense of, you know, the, the international side of things. And, um, and when I was thinking that shortly after we had talked, uh, several like randomly and not like, not in any like, like same vein or anything randomly, several of our friends at breweries up in Mont the Montreal area had reached out to me and were asking about, uh, like, event like uh, brew fest or events that they might be able to participate in vermont because they they wanted to start kind of you know spreading their word down here and vice versa and uh it just got me thinking like i feel like we should strengthen that connection again because it mm, yeah. i think COVID kind of like got in the way a little bit you know we have the vermont brewers festival which happens to be right in foam's front lawn obviously but uh <laughs> which is nice and uh there was a there was a lot of Canadian influence there in the past. And I think because of some border issues and stuff, it, it kind of faded away. But um, I'm on the Vermont Brewers Association board of directors now. And so we I brought that up in one of the meetings that we had recently. And so we're we're going to be working on uh, trying to create some events around Vermont around Vermont that um, are a little bit more inclusive with our Canadian friends and bring some people down and uh, we want to do some stuff up there too. So that's just an, another like kind of side conversation, side thought that came from the link up conversation. And that's just, that. that's like another thing, you know, it's, it's like anything that can kind of branch off of that, I think in a positive way is only good. hundred percent. That's, so, that's so cool. I love yeah. that. I saw you guys did the Masorum collab recently too, which is fantastic. Yeah. People were super yeah. stoked about that. Thanks. That made me very happy just to see that. And I was like, yeah, man, that's, that's dope. And I'd definitely love to see if there's anything as well. I mean, I'll tell you off air, but if there's any way that we can help facilitate any conversations with anyone here, whether it's Quebec or Ontario, we have, a, I'm sure that if you guys reach out, everyone's going <laughs> to respond yes. very, very quickly. <laughs> but if there's any way to make that easier, we would absolutely be more than happy to connect with anything. Cause it's, that's what I've always wanted to see as someone who's not from Canada period. Mm -hmm. And then we were living here in, in Toronto and then we moved to Montreal and like, traveling everywhere i always felt that people were you know busy but looking down in at their own world dealing with their own shit that they had to deal with and which is completely yeah. fair enough but they weren't really looking up and being like well why don't we connect with these guys over here and, and so on and so forth and i've always felt that that was something that we wanted to play some sort of a minor role in in, in assisting that just at least at the very like least like hey like 
yo, Quebec and Ontario, how about that? You know, Quebec's already kind of looking at... Oh, we wanted Vermont, Vermont to merge in with Canada. That was our whole That would be the optimal the situation. <laughs> we were just like, yeah, hey, seriously. we'll take Bernie. We had a plan. whole plan. <laughs> we had a whole plan. We're like, no, we'll, we'll take, take Bernie it. as yeah. our prime minister. I was like, he can just come <laughs> yeah, over yeah, and we'll exactly. auto-enroll him. And, yeah. then, and then the exchange is that we also get Vermont and we're all one thing. And we're like, okay, or should right. Quebec, and Can- <laughs> Quebec and Vermont be their own separate state? We had a whole plan. We, had, we thought of a bunch we're of ways. We're yeah. <laughs> it's a little thing it's just so like easy sovereign land exactly um but i love that that is a, a fantastic way to end that and uh, definitely i'm sure that uh, everyone watching and listening would also feel the same way that we'd love to see more of that and it's something yeah. that like you said that after the last two years it's been the last thing on anybody's mind but now we're sort of the you know smoke is clearing as such i didn't even think about that 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 would take the connection away where it's like because it was such a thing where it's like we were all going over all the time we were on that side and it yeah. did like yeah so it's like we lost a bit of that yeah. so it's, it'd be nice yeah to it's, it's, i think you have to be aggressive and very proactive yeah. to do it because it's not just going to happen so uh, very very encouraged hearing that uh, that's on the top of your guys yeah. minds um and uh you know whatever whatever can be ha- i imagine anyone watching and listening will also probably be pretty excited about that so if there's yeah let's let's talk more about that for sure but guys this is uh fantastic i know we probably kept you a little longer than we uh told you but i knew this would be a conversation to that we wouldn't want to sort of cut off i feel like it was all super valuable um once again, thank you guys, you know, thank you both for real, for, for just being so down for everything and for making such a phenomenal beer. Yeah. Um, the merch, the whole thinking behind it is just amazing. And to be our first, like it's like we didn't do it small time going into the States. We did a big time. We were a little nervous, to be honest, going into the States because we were like, shit, if this leads into too many people being interested, I hope that we were able to, to cope with it all. But everything worked out good yeah and our it partners was... are great even like cicerone and stuff like that they're all fantastic yeah be very able sure to, to, to cope with everything yeah. yeah exactly so like for real from from all of the team thank you guys very deeply it's just it's so valued and so appreciated and mm-hmm. to see and hear all the things that you guys are doing around it and that one little convo just to explain to you how this shit worked you know led to so many offshoots is uh it means the world it's awesome. amazing yeah it's super super thank valid. you thank you guys Thank you for yeah. uh, bringing us into the conversation and keeping it going. And I definitely will be, we will definitely be reaching out about all sorts of other things too. <laughs> so yeah. um, thank you guys. Awesome. And again, thank you. I think uh, also we can definitely help with uh, connecting other breweries in the States and stuff like that to link up uh, and, and trying to help spread, spread the word and also just spread the, uh, the, the community. Awesome um, so uh we, we look forward to becoming growing in the states and growing in canada and yeah being love the it. change so and also you changed. certainly didn't keep us too long i feel like we've been hanging out for like five minutes yeah. <laughs> that's why the that's why the pods go for so long because you get vibing and you just talk right like yeah these ones yeah, are exactly intended. I feel like Tiff lets it, Tiff is usually my, uh, uh, what do you call I'm on it? these ones and I keep, I'm the time person. So yeah. I keep things like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but if, if it's just Craig, if it was you guys, you'd be here till 12 o'clock. So like, oh, yeah, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Sure. Sure. it wasn't yeah. like a, so well, yeah, I can tell you for the second one, for the BAOS one, we'll the go fully nuts. but I feel like this one, was, yeah. this was yeah. very necessary and we, you know, none of this was, uh, off scope really. Out of no, topic. it was so, perfect. perfect. Um, let's just get the thumbnail. We're going to take a screenshot here. guys. you want to hold up? Yeah, so did I hold up the can here? How could we uh, let that bad boy uh, in our sit? Area. I love it. Oh. All right, hang on. Boom, boom. All right. Oh, almost right, got it. in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I do it all the time. Ready? Glorious. <laughs> um, boy. <laughs> um, stick around after we wrap up and we'll, we'll, we'll finish up off air. But where can everybody find Foam online? Find them online? Find find, us. find, you find brewers yes. online. Uh, yeah, so we we do deliver to uh, six states. We we deliver to Vermont, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Virginia, DC, and New Hampshire. Um, but we also uh, recently, well, I guess COVID delivering or distributing to most of New England. Uh, super thanks to Sierra Nevada. If you ever oh. listen to this. Uh, <laughs> More to come on that story, but uh, they they kind of gave us the rights to distribute out of the state, which was very kind of them. They did not need to do that. We uh, we we used foam brewers, which is uh, was a, was a copyright thing with their pilsner, 
and uh, super thankful that they allowed us to uh, make some changes to our business model. Talk about a, a leading uh, large brewery in our space uh, being nice to the little guy. So thank awesome. you. Very that's cool. cool. I love that. Okay, yeah, I want to hear more about that story. We got, that's we'll we'll yeah, talk that's about that the next, little that's for the next one for sure. Yeah. Woo, yeah. Q, Q1 2023 is about to be lit. <laughs> um, everyone can get you guys at, at Foam Brewers on Instagram. I believe it's Foam Brewers on uh, on Facebook as well, I imagine. Oh, it's Foam Brewers VT on Twitter. I should work for Foam. Well, you're on point. Yeah. Um, yeah, geez. You want to join the marketing it, team? Yeah. Or what do I you think do? I might. <laughs> I'll, I'll apply. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Make sure you can check that out. And the link up beer and merch. Where can people get that specifically if they were looking to? Foambrewers.com/slash all products. Beautiful. Fantastic. So they can order it online. They can come to the brewery, obviously, and yep. uh, pick it up there. The merch store is always fire. I always get like a little lit and walk around. I'm like, oh shit, this is fire. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's like a, yeah, 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 it's yeah, right, yeah, right yeah. by the bathroom there. I love yeah. it. Um, once again, stick around after guys, we'll just wrap this up and then we'll, uh, we'll finish up off here. But, uh, Bobby John, thank you guys very, very much for your time and, uh, and for, uh, I thought hanging you called out them tonight. Bobby John. I was like, are you merging the names? But I think it was Bob and John. I think I meant a comma. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Breathe. It felt like Bobby John. Thank <laughs> you so much. Can you imagine if I was just dropping middle names? Yeah. And making it up. <laughs> getting, yeah. getting real personal. Yeah. Um, guys, thank you again, everybody. Thank you for watching and listening. And thank you for supporting series four of Link Up. So that is a wrap for series four. We'll be back series five, I, I believe. At this point, it'll it'll kick off just it's, around the very beginning of the spring. Yes, uh, two thousand and twenty-three. Oh my we're goodness. almost finished locking in breweries, but if anyone is ever interested in participating in Link Up, you know, obviously we're going to be doing three series a year at this point is what we're scheduled in. So if anyone is ever interested, whether it's U.S., Canada, and beyond, please let us know. We'd love to talk about it. Um, but guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. If you enjoyed the episode, smash the thumbs up, hit subscribe below, hit the notification bell okay. so you know when the new new drops. Follow us everywhere at BAOS Podcast and of course at Link Up Beer. And if you or anyone you know are interested in applying for the program, linkupbeer.org. You can apply online. You have a wonderful conversation with Danielle. She'll figure out exactly what you need and how we can help. And uh, we'll go from there. Um, make sure you support any of the link up beers, uh, you know, a bunch of them are probably kicking around still They, you know, that's the point. And, you know, maybe some of the bars, if your local beer bar or, um, uh, independent bottle shop, you at least here. You can get the beers at Society of Beer Drinking Ladies, the downtown location in, um, for Society sure. Clubhouse. Yes, in, Society um, Clubhouse. On College some Street. Some stuff's on tap there, yeah. Yep. They've definitely picked up a few of them and they're working on getting the rest of them here in Toronto. Um, but elsewhere, ask for them. Love you all. Thank you guys for the support. We'll see you guys uh, in, in the spring. Cheers, y'all. Thank you. Bye.